All right, so we've completed phase one and phase two, which is soft tissue technique paired with some stretching. Let's unlock some opportunities for better movement at the T-spine with one of my favorite drills, the sideline window. I'm gonna get Chad here on his side with his shoulders and hips stacked. We're gonna maximize surface area contact on the foam roller by bending the top leg at 90 degrees and placing it into the roller. We're gonna dorsiflex the toes here. We're gonna extend the hip here, getting nice and long, co-contracting the hips here and keeping a nice position here. Now, if your clients struggle with head position here, you can stick some Eryx pads or some, another foam roller underneath to keep the neck comfortable. From here, you're gonna take a deep breath in, and then I want you to reach as far as you can with the top hand, like you're reaching and gonna continue to tickle the floor with your fingertips. Once you've reached as far as you can, we are going to drive up, staying low with the hand and exhaling. Once you get into an overhead position here, you're gonna turn the hand so the bicep is beside the ear. You're gonna drive down and move that shoulder through a full range of motion as we reset the position without dumping out lumbar spine, without rotating the hips. Pillar integrity in this drill is vital. Reach, 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 reach. And then pull down, moving at scat. All right, y'all. We're gonna get into phase four, which is activation. Activation, not annihilation. But we're gonna use a straight arm pull down out of a hinge face position. Before we get into the hinge, it's important that we understand the difference between a squat and a hinge. When we're squatting, our knees and our hips are traveling at the same time with the hips traveling back and down and the knees in a forward position matching my torso. When we work into a hinge position, the hips travel back with some slight knee bend, but a vertical shin. Most, more posterior chain dominant in nature. So I'm gonna get Chad here in his power stance. An easy way to find this is to close the eyes and jump up and down a couple times. That's gonna be a pretty good spot for you to start. So I have Chad here take his power stance and we're gonna do what's called a reaching hinge. Because you have these bands to counterbalance you, it's gonna allow you to get into a better hinge position a lot easier. From here, we always want to start in a good finished position. Crown of the head tall, shoulders packed, feet firmly rooted into the ground, driving through. We have the glutes on already, the adductors on already, everything nice and locked in. Now from this position, I want him to get soft in the knees and track those knees out towards the third and fifth toe as he gets into this soft knee position. From there, I wanna act like I'm karate chopping the hips back. As he shoots these hips back, the head remains in a nice position with the shoulders above the hips, the hips above the knees. He's gonna drive the arms straight back, lock the position in, maintaining a nice hinge position, isometrically contracting in this range of motion. And then he's gonna extend up, allowing for the arms to go into extension, and then drive down, lock the position in, co-contraction there, co-contraction here, and a good, stable, neutral pillar position. It's important that you get into these positions before you start your session. Too often times, the first time someone is getting in the setup position is when they're actually starting their warm-up sets. When you do that, you're leaving not only performance on the table, but long-term health.